at that time, 2002, I didn't have that much gear for like composing and stuff. So I basically talked with a friend of mine, guitar player, and said, hey, you want to do it with me? We need to provide four songs, two minutes long. And they have this criteria that they are looking for. So are you game? He said, yes, of course, let's do it. His name was Gustavo Garcia. And, you know, funny enough, for today's standards, we were using very questionable equipment. It was like very basic. And we were using the early versions of Pro Tools for like home studios. We were sampling stuff in the house, you know, outdoors and stuff like that. And then processing that and then using it for composing the, the music. So we were trying to be as original as possible. Because the whole idea, even today, when you're composing for these type of gigs, you don't want people to recognize if it's coming from a sample pack or a virtual instrument. You don't want to use the presets or what's coming from the sample pack. You want to manipulate it in a way that is not recognizable. We recorded real guitars, real drum set, and then we will record noises, for example, closing the door of a closet or closing like drawers or like dropping stuff on the floor, which is something that even today is, is done. Today is easier to do, but back in the day, it, it took way longer because once you had those sound samples, you have to load them into mini disc. So today you probably can do it straight to the computer or the field recorders that, are, that have like hours and hours of time for recording. This is like mini disc and it was almost like dealing with a tape. You had a limited amount of time to be able to record that, usually with a stereo microphone. From the mini disc, we will load those sounds into Pro Tools in the computer and then start manipulating them with mostly like built-in plugins in Pro Tools, like putting distortion, compression, reverb, and then reversing the sound to make it sound weird. Or basically what you do is like time warp. Time warp meaning you stretch the sound. In this type of gigs, you do it as work for hire. So you don't have any credits. So basically Stuart Copeland hires you to write music, but he takes the credit. He pays you a flat fee for making the music and then he presents that to Sony as if he was the one composing it and producing it. In this case, they pay you per 30 seconds of music, a flat fee, and that's pretty much it. You don't have any credits or any rights for royalties. We did four, and then out of four, they chose two, actually. They basically masked them with other stuff. So basically, they took our tracks and they put more on top. They make them like twice as long, but the whole core of the, the track is there. They just added percussion and sound effects which is what uh, Stuart Copeland mainly did. He didn't compose that much. See, he hired different composers and what all the composers were like giving him, he was adding his own touch to it, kind of like justify his work. They wanted something that sounded like what this, they described here as war music, electronic world music. <laughs> So this one had to be kind of like a chase type of uh, scene where there's like a lot of action. So we have that kind of like arp and then we have that kick kind of setting up what's going to happen. And it's kind of like a techno rock type of, uh, you know, arrangement because you have that uh, distorted the guitar. Kind of like coming in on, on every one of every bar to kind of like set up the pulse uh, complementing the kick drum, right? Then you have a, a guitar that is doing a slide down doing kind of like a chromatic thing. These things go through many iterations and they mutate a lot from what they describe to what it ends up like sounding and looking like. And that's very common in these type of environments. At one point we have to deliver the music. So Emilio said to me, why don't you bring him in person the CDs with the music? And mind you, there were CDs at that time, right? So it's like, are you kidding me? Of course. 
So I went to this uh, amazing place in LA, and it was this beautiful kind of like ranch in Brentwood, converted barn, and he was there waiting for me at the, the, the door. It's like, oh my God, there is Stuart Coppola. And then he, you know, invites me in. He's like very friendly, very funny, very extroverted. And at one point it's like, oh, wait for me here. And I turn around and his classic drum set, the Tama drum set that he used in the uh, early uh, years of uh, the police, was like set up there, like the way I remember as a kid, right? So imagine the state that I was in. <laughs> it's like, this is like, the dream come true. I'm in paradise right now. If you pay attention to uh, the track number two that I sent you, it wasn't choked. See the, the sound that we have those kind of like marimbas. It, they were saying, okay, it, once again, make it sound like you are in an alien world. Imagine that you are in, you know, the Middle East in type of like vibe. It's kind of like a, a rainforest, but surrounded by a, a desert, right? That's why you, you hear that voice. And that's why it's also the uh, the time signature. I mean, I mean, it's it's not four four. It's kind of like three four. It's like in triplets. So that makes it sound more like uh, war music, if you will. Basically, instead of like hearing ta 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 ta, ta you're hearing the subdivision is da 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 da. da. So one two three, one two three, one two three. Well, this one, the description was like you are kind of like getting in, into a cave. And you are like sliding on a, a cart over a, kind of like a railroad. That was kind of like the idea. It's like you get into the cage, so you have a moment that is kind of like dark, and then you start like gaining momentum, and then all of a sudden you're in a cave and you see torches, and you know, it's moving around, you're moving around. That's why it starts kind of like mysterious and it's kind of setting the vibe, and all of a sudden it turns into a double time. 